Hi all, welcome to the PH video blog. And yes, before you YouTube commentators start up, I'm wearing a really stupid bobble hat. There's a good reason for that. Although it's the first day of spring here in the UK, it is ruddy freezing. And the Caterham 310S you see behind me quite obviously has no roof and no doors. So indulge me. It's cold. I want to stay warm. I'm going to wear the hat. Now, let me talk you around why this particular Caterham stands out as something rather special in the current range and why if Caterham had to build just one model for the rest of time, it would be this one. Quite a bold claim. Let me explain why that might be. Now, the Caterham range starts with the 1.6 litre Ford Sigma engined 270. That has got 137 horsepower. The 310, which is a development of that car, still the 1.6, has got 154 horsepower. Now, from there, you can go to the 360, which is the first of the two litre cars. This is where things start getting a bit more serious. That's got 183 horsepower. Then you can go to the 420, and that has 213 horsepower. By that point, things are getting really quite tasty. You can go beyond that and get the supercharged 620R, but for the moment, let's just concentrate on the core cars in the range. Now, this one is what they call an SV. Now, you'll see from the front here that it's a little bit wider than a standard Caterham. That is the SV chassis, as I say, that's a wider chassis. It gives you a lot more space inside the cabin, in the footwell and things like that. This one's also got the lower floor, which gives more space for taller people. This is basically the Caterham for the more, shall we say, powerfully built driver. Now, you can buy your Caterhams in two basic flavours. Three if you include the absolute bare bones one, which really is very, very basic. But So you start with the basic one, then you can go to the S, which is what we have here. Now this is basically the road configuration, so it's got a windscreen, it's got the conventional seats, it's got inertia reel seat belts, things like that. It's even got a heater that's positively decadent by Caterham standards. This is basically the GT Caterham. From there you can go to the R, now that's the kind of track spec car, that gets a lighter flywheel, limited slip diff, things like that. To that you can add six speed gearbox and a load of other bits and bobs, fancier suspension, all sorts of things. Basically, Caterhams can get quite expensive quite quickly, so just to give you an idea, this one would start at about £23,000 for the kit. You could get the factory to build it for you for another two and a half grand. You could get the SV body, as I say here, for another two and a half grand. The S kit that costs £3,000 if you want to go for the R instead that's £4,000 so as you can see things rack up pretty quickly so from a 23 grand car the one you see here is more like 32 plus which is quite a lot of money for a car of this nature but the good thing is that you can run a Caterham you can scratch that itch you can enjoy yourself for a while and then when you come to sell it it pretty much gets your money back so they don't suffer depreciation like normal cars they are something you can own and enjoy and then sell on without taking a massive depreciation hit but enough of the man maths. I think we should go for a drive, shouldn't we? So those of you with an interest in continuity will have spotted the obvious error in that I'm now driving with the side screens in place as opposed to how the car looks in some of the other footage. Now, that's not because I've suddenly become a wuss. It's because when I played back the recording of first bit of filming you basically couldn't hear a single word of what I was saying because of the wind. Now that might be a bit of a blessing but there's a lot to talk about with this car so hopefully this time at least you'll be able to hear what I'm saying. So why is this 310S the car that Caterham reckons is the best that it builds, the best overall blend of the Caterham 7? But it's got a lot to do with that engine and it harks back to a previous Caterham era when the cars used K-series engines, Rover K-series engines, and although they didn't have a great reputation in some of the mainstream cars they were used in, in the Caterham context, people really loved the reviness of them and the kind of explosive power delivery that they had. Caterham since shifted to Ford engines, as I explained, the 1.6 and the 2.0-litre, and although these are really solid, reliable units and they do the numbers on the power, the real enthusiasts have felt that they don't quite have the same character as the K-series cars. So anyway, the 310, as I said, uses the 1.6 Sigma engine, which in its basic form has 137 horsepower and is a nice engine, but it doesn't quite have the, the go of the K-Series. So what they've done is, and what they described as a happy accident when they were fiddling around with settings for the race car, they threw in some new cams, new air filters, and a few other bits and bobs. And they created this 154 horsepower engine, which they went, hang on, that's really, really good. It's got almost the power of the R300, but it's the lighter, revier engine. So that is why they describe this as the best mix 
of everything because the R300 in its various forms is again the car that people think represents the best of Caterham, it's the best mix of power, the best mix of entertainment. And I've driven an R300 and I can say that that is a really, really fun car, but the weird thing about Caterhams is whichever one you happen to be driving, you will be thinking, yeah, you know what, this is about the right amount of power. I don't see why you would possibly want more power than this in a 7. And then you drive a more powerful Caterham and you go, Actually, no, no, that, that's, that's about a sensible amount of power, and so it goes and goes until you get to the crazy supercharged 620R with over 300 horsepower, and you're thinking, no, you know what, that feels like a sensible amount of power in a cage, and when quite blatantly it isn't. Anyway, so here we are on a typical English B road in the freezing cold, which is why I've still got my racing driver gloves on. This isn't some pretentious affectation, that's because otherwise I wouldn't be able to feel my hands. And we're enjoying a catering in what should really be its element. So why is a catering so much fun on a twisty B road? Well, it's got a lot to do with the fact that everything hits you in the face in the catering, quite literally, whether that's the rain, the wind, bits of gravel from the front tyres. It's a very full-on experience driving a Caterham along the B road, but that's great because so many modern cars isolate you from the process of driving, don't they? The Caterham puts you right back in it. Every little input you make to the car has an immediate response. I guess probably the kind of people who are into riding motorbikes will tell you that's exactly what you get from a motorbike as well. I don't ride myself, but I'm willing to believe that that's what the thrill of two wheels can be like, but the Caterham gives you that on four wheels and it comes down to the weight. This car in its standard form weighs just over half a tonne, 540 kilos. Now with this wider SV chassis and a few other bits and bobs, I'm willing to believe this one probably weighs a bit more than that, but by any modern standard it's a very, very light car indeed and that just gives you such an amazing response. So here I am come up behind a slower moving car. It just gives you such an instant throttle response, even with what is, in effect, a very small engine. So here we go, third gear, didn't need to shift down, round we go, job done, no drama. So it's just such a relevant amount of performance to a road like this. That's really it. So you've got taking power you've got the size of the car makes such a difference as well because because it's so narrow you've suddenly got a line through the corners that a modern car or a big car just doesn't give you so that and the fact that every mile an hour you put on the speedo feels like double just makes it such a an exciting experience in a really really good way it just as I say it brings back what's special about driving, what's exciting about driving, and that, to me, is what the Caterham experience is all about, and what this car does so nicely. That engine is really nice as well, it's got a real kind of zinginess to it, I've just been driving it on the track, and it'll happily rev out to 7,500, which is pretty tasty in this day and age, and it's got grunt as well, so it'll pull from being in gear, it's, it's not as perhaps torquey as the two litre engines, but it counters that with a real kind of zingy reviness as well, which is loads and loads of fun. You keep no you'll notice I keep coming back to that word fun. That is what you get in a Caterham. Is this the perfect Caterham 7 though, as the builders would have you believe? Personally, it's not my pick. I don't really like this SV chassis, I don't like the look of it so much. It's amazing what a few millimetres here and there can do to the styling, so I think the proportions are maybe a little bit out in this car. It doesn't quite have the same looks of the narrow body car. I'm lucky I guess I fit in that car. The biggest problem most people have with that is their feet. To be honest, if you've got anything above sort of size 9 feet, you find the footwells really, really cramped on a standard cater and you end up mashing all the pedals at the same time. Not a problem in this car. In fact, it's almost difficult to heel and toe because the pedals are now too far apart. Not a problem I'd usually have. So I don't like the looks of the SV card so much, and it's quite expensive, another two and a half grand. 
over the price of the standard car so there's more money involved as well I think for me for a caterham I'd want the kind of the R spec the more kind of racetrack spec with the, the limited slip diff and the zingier lighter fire wheel and things like that so this particular spec I like the engine I like the experience of driving it along this road but this isn't actually my perfect caterham what is my perfect caterham is the one that we've specced at Piston Heads for our long termer and will be coming in a few months time and I will look forward to sharing that car with you in another blog a little bit down the line. <laughs>